Hi, my name is Moss, and I love documenting wine mom culture. Wine mom culture consists of a lot of paraphernalia and home goods like this. I find them in the wild and I photograph them. I often have good luck spotting them in airports, department store sale racks, and the kinds of local drug stores that have a home decor section. That last image was kind of a hybrid. It had some wine mom elements, but clearly some other elements as well. I saw someone on this app use the term syscore to describe an outfit once, and I loved that, so I'm going to call this broader category syscore. Man cave is a syscore theme that often shows up alongside wine mom. While wine mom decor tends to involve talking about how you're self-medicating with alcohol to handle the experience of compulsory heterosexuality, man cave is more focused on suggesting your interest in casually murdering people who enter your private space. Feel free to duet or stitch to share your own favorite syscore objects. So, TikTok really had an untapped market for analysis of wine mom culture, huh? Because there's almost a thousand more of you than there were this morning, and that is wild to me. To answer some of the questions and themes that appeared in the comments. Will this be a series? Yes, you've all given me so many ideas. This seems like it should be an essay. Yes, I agree. One commenter already wrote one. I turned it into a tiny URL so it's easier for me to link, which I'm going to do above right now. If you want to see what other people have shared on this theme, uh, go to the search bar and search Stitch followed by my username. You should be able to see what other people have responded with. If you want to know what else to expect from this account, uh, mainly I make puns about being trans, share sweet baked goods that I've made, uh, sometimes talk about living in a queer and trans shared house with other kind of leftist anarchist zone folks, and hopefully soon I'll share some of the zines I make. This comment is a really good summary of something that a lot of different commenters brought up. And my video was kind of tongue-in-cheek and snarky, because sometimes when you're looking at a stressed-out, messed-up, kind of bizarre home decor aesthetic that represents a lot of pretty sad and toxic things about heterosexuality and cisgender existence, you've got to laugh at it. But really, seriously, I worry about wine moms. A lot of this aesthetic is about drinking to cope with the fact that your life is unmanageable and you don't feel supported by your husband and you don't know how to handle your kids. And as genuine advice, if you or someone you know feels like they're in that place, I deeply, deeply recommend checking out Domestic Blister's channel on TikTok. She's a mom with her own history of addiction who talks lovingly, creatively, helpfully, and non-judgmentally about how to manage household tasks when you feel like you're struggling, and how to communicate about what's important to you, and how to keep yourself physically and emotionally safe doing that labor. Hello, fellow Syscore anthropologists. I'm having top surgery in the morning, so I am pre-recording this video, so I have something to share with you while I'm healing. A reply to my initial Syscore video mentioned something called the female catalog and suggested I look into that. I haven't ordered a physical catalog, but they have a website that is, who a hotbed of Syscore items. We've got Wine Mom Classic, Beach Mom, Coffee Mom, a concept that intersects with the general exhaustion of trying to survive your work schedule under capitalism, something multiple commenters brought up last time. This one's got a bit of Blessed Mom vibes, combined with the sort of old ball and chain, oh god, I don't know how to deal with my spouse energy. Here we've got something for your beer-drinking husband, combined with some weird-ass fat phobia. A slightly milder, but still unsettling, old ball and chain energy. And you might want to pause to read this one, because it's a lot. Here's a part two going through things on the female catalog website, but this time it's home decor I actually like. The reason syscore is a concept I critique is because I think it's really creepy to market home decor to people based on the idea that marriage and gender roles are grim, inescapable prisons and that you should be expected to hate your spouse and to drink about it. But there's lots of things with fun, kitschy aesthetics related to that style that don't have those horrible messages, so we're going to look at some of those together. I agree with this wholeheartedly. Elf on the Shelf primes kids to accept the concept of living under a surveillance state. Get him out of the house. This one's probably meant to be self-deprecating, but I like it. Cleaning is morally neutral. Make a functional home in the way that works for you. If that includes dust, that's fine. As someone who has issues with rushing all the time, this speaks to me. The tiny text here says a crowded camper is better than an empty castle. We had a friend living in our yard in a camper for many years when I was a kid, and we were in a mobile home. I love this. This would have been a good vibe for that. This one just feels like a good philosophy for this year in general. And I don't know if they meant this one to look this gay or not, but I like it. I'm rolling with it. Oh! Hello, fellow Syscore anthropologists. 
let's see how deep 60 seconds will let us spelunk into the concept of the man cave. The term and concept of the man cave was popularized in the early 90s via the book Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. And the concept of a man cave, a sort of private space a man can have within his shared home uh, with a partner and possibly kids that really feels like his, that can be devoted to his hobbies and interests, is a genuine and understandable response to a lot of actual factors and stressors in life. But it's also a response that comes layered with some weird assumptions and side effects. There's a kind of unabashed hatred that soaks through some of these rule sets and signage that really suggests your problems are a lot bigger than having differing home decor needs than your spouse. It's also not uncommon for signage to threaten harm to anyone violating the sanctity of the man cave. What's the most man cave space or object you've ever seen? Hello, fellow Syscore anthropologists. I got a few requests to talk about she sheds after my man cave video, so let's grab our assorted craft supplies and go out into the backyard to take a look. What I could find about she sheds formatted their purpose very similar to that of a man cave, a place to de-stress, a place that's just yours, that's disconnected from the responsibilities of the rest of your home and life. I didn't expect the things about she sheds that I read to be so distinctive about them being a whole separate building. A man cave could be part of your house. Why can't a she shed just be like your craft corner? You have to have a whole other building? That's a, uh, hmm, a lot of us really aren't going to be able to do that, huh? I did enjoy some of the inspirational examples I found. This one's got some good blessed signage. And this one's got everything from cute dangling plants to inexplicable uh, rustic nautical objects, even though you're in the backyard. Much like the man cave, this still feels like a very intensely gendered way to de-stress by creating a whole separate space from your household, when maybe there are some other tools you could use to de-stress. Hello, fellow Syscore anthropologists. A concept I want to emphasize when I'm talking about things like a man cave or a she shed is that on its own, having a space to do hobbies or crafts or to be social with friends of a same or similar gender is not inherently a Syscore experience. In my mind, the Syscore element is inserted by the fact that corporations are invested in marketing the specific gendered image of how you should relax and de-stress to cisgender people and making it very much about being exhausted and alienated from the household and the family that they're experiencing and turning that stress into a new marketing tool as opposed to something to talk about or try to revamp or rebalance in your life. Being happy to have a craft room doesn't inherently mean you're trapped in your marriage. But if your craft room has a strong live, laugh, love theme, maybe do a little moment of self-reflection. By the same token, having a garage workshop isn't inherently toxic masculinity. But I don't love that when I googled garage workshop, Google asked if I wanted to see man cave. Okay, so I didn't initially have a lot of ideas for this premise, but commenters sure did. And while I personally don't love putting gender terms on the spaces that we use for relaxing, crafting, hobbies, that's kind of what I've been talking about with the man cave and she shed videos, I also think that trans people should get to do whatever the hell they want when it comes to tongue-in-cheek gender humor. So I turned a bunch of these into actual little signs or phone backgrounds that you can download. So here we go. I made all of these using free photos and assets from Pexels and using the website Canva, and they're all in a Dropbox link where you can download them for your own use. I'm frustrated that I can't seem to find any of the original comments, but if you are any of the people who commented on my original Wine Mom video saying that you would love to get some Wine Mom styled home decor, but have it say things like ACAB or leave your shoes and gender at the door on it, you owe it to yourself to go and look at Kat Grafham's Twitter and probably follow her. Point one, because she is an excellent artist, and point two, a momentary drum roll pause before I show you this picture. She has this custom sign in her house. Truly living the ultimate trans dream of wine mom aesthetics without wine mom cultural BS. Hello, fellow Syscore anthropologists. A couple different folks told me they thought I would like looking at the products on the Cracker Barrel website for some examples of Syscore home decor, so I decided to check it out. I'll be honest, a lot of it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Some of these are a little intense, but this is kind of sweet. Not bad advice, for the most part. Similarly, this one doesn't even feel very self-deprecating. This seems like kind of a warm and realistic sense of what a busy home looks like. 
And this one has a similar vibe, for me at least, to churches that put, like, everyone is welcome banners outside. They may or may not actually be good in practice, but, like, they're trying a little. I don't know what the deal is with all the chickens, though. People told me roosters and chickens were a cis core theme, and I'm definitely seeing that on Cracker Barrel. I feel like everyone I know with chickens is a pretty hardcore leftist, but that's probably more just a function of who I know in general. Even the stuff I found about wine wasn't bad. Like, this isn't about drinking alone or drinking as a stress factor for your relationships, it's about being social, at the very least. And this one kind of rules. I honestly like this one. Seriously, though, what's with all the chickens? The Cracker Barrel website is a rich vein of ciscore home decor, so I'm making a part two. This includes some ones that I found kind of fun. Honestly, some of this stuff that was probably designed for exhausted moms really just speaks to the alienation of labor in general. Like, let's overturn this system and rethink the nature of work. You know, it's not sustainable for us. Also, I saw this tweet recently and I loved it, but I wasn't really sure what phenomenon she was referring to until I saw some of these pictures. For your living room, gather. Or for your bathroom, brush, wash, and comb. <laughs> these crack me up. I don't really like them per se, but they're kind of hilarious to me. This one's got a cheesy earnestness that I admire. It feels like the good side of weird boomer cartoon logic. And I always like to end these with one that I think is probably more gay in practice than the creators intended during the design process. Hello, fellow Cisco anthropologists. They're here. The Wine Mom zines. They're one-page zines, a risograph printed in bold red and beautiful orchid purple ink, which I overlapped in some places to look like wine spills. And when they're folded up, they make this beautiful little one-page booklet that expands on the themes from my viral video. When they're all folded, they look like this. I'm so freaking happy with them. You can buy your own copy on my itch.io page, which is in my linked tree. Uh, that also lets you, if you want to, download a free or pay what you want digital version of the zine, which you can read online or print out in black and white and fold your own zine out of. Hello, fellow Ciscore anthropologists. At the end of one of my recent videos, I asked why there were so many roosters and chickens in the home decor section of Cracker Barrel. We have the answer for why Cracker Barrel specifically does it, but commenters shared a lot of other reasons that I found really interesting, and I'm going to try and summarize them here. Point one. Chickens are one of the most common domesticated animals in the world. Uh, all kinds of cultures and regions have historic associations with chickens, or sometimes roosters in particular, that have been around for way, way longer than any home decor brand or set of current cultural and gender norms in the U.S. Just to give a sense of scale, uh, this is how many countries Wikipedia lists as the origin points for specific chicken breeds. This commenter gives a thoughtful summary of a couple of other points that stood out to me. Chickens overlap well with both queer and leftist kind of cottagecore fantasies, and also really heterosexual, sexually dimorphic kinds of cottagecore fantasies about getting back to nature and having a farm, whether or not you were ever connected to that kind of cultural norm to begin with. 